Hi everybody, my name is Joe K. It's just another day in the underground, and today we're gonna unpack the C Mob and Stevie Stone feature drama that has been going on for the past week or so. It has since been settled, but we're gonna unpack everything that happened and where we're at today. So for those of you that don't know, C Mob put up a, a post on social media in response to an interaction he had with Stevie Stone. And in this post, he claimed that Stevie Stone did not deliver a verse that he had purchased like seven years ago, uh, gave him the runaround, and essentially scammed him out of a feature. This caused a complete eruption in the underground and caused a lot of people to jump on Stevie Stone for the allegations that Steve Mob was putting forward. Now, I'm going to dive into the post because the post has since been deleted by CMob, but I think it's important to talk about because this kind of crap happens more often than people realize and, and more often than I even talk about on this podcast, not on Stevie Stone in particular, but artists in general. You guys have probably seen some of my past videos talking about uh, artists like Gotti and uh, others that have not provided features when other artists have paid them. And oftentimes, these artists that are getting ripped off don't have the type of platform to generate enough buzz and, quite frankly, enough anger from the right people to even put a dent in making something happen like what happened for C-Mob in this situation. So we're going to dive into this here. I got the receipts. I, I knew this crap was going to be taken down because it always does. And I think it's important that we keep this history out there so that people understand that when they're working with certain artists, they, they need to know that these kind of things happen. They need to be able to take into account that X amount of people have had this type of interaction with said artist, whether it's Stevie Stone or somebody else. I understand that things come up. I understand that every situation is unique in and of itself, but this kind of crap has got to stop. It's freaking ridiculous. It's unacceptable the way that he responded. And, and quite frankly, it could have been handled seven years ago, but it never was. I do have some criticism uh, for C-Mob as well, because I, I feel like this, I mean, it's seven years old. I think that's the only thing. If you're going to knock him, that's the only thing you can really knock him for. But I feel like he handled the situation very well. And quite frankly, I'm glad that he came forward with the information because there's not enough artists at his level that come forward with this type of information when it happens. So I'm going to pull up the screenshots that C-Mob had posted uh, on social media, as well as his post uh, that he, he put out there for everybody. I'm not going to read it verbatim here. I just don't think we have enough time. I'm going to summarize everything, and I will leave them up here and, and let you pause the video and read the posts as they're uh, presented so that if you want to read the thing in its entirety, you can. This post has since been deleted, so this is probably one of the few places that you're going to be able to find uh, this particular piece of content. But essentially what this boils down to is uh, he purchased a Stevie Stone feature seven years ago um, uh, at a Tech 9 meet and greet at Bogarts in Cincinnati. He paid him $1,000. He essentially uh, ended up, you know, reaching out several times, not getting anywhere. And Stevie Stone pulled what a lot of other artists, I, the Joker is a prime example. He, I have literally heard this exact same line come from the Joker as well. Um, but it, it's essentially, hey, it would be much easier if I could not only do uh, a hook, but also do a verse or, you know, or vice versa, whatever the situation at hand may be here. Um, you know, in, in, in this case, he ultimately tried to get another thousand dollars out of him, um, for, for a hook. And he's like, no, I'm not doing a thousand dollars. I'll pay you $250. And, and that's essentially what they agreed to. Um, he had still not received his verse up until this point. So, now he's out a total of like $1,250 was the grand total after it's all said and done here. He kept getting the runaround from him. Uh, he couldn't get his money. And this caused 
um, you know, essentially he just kind of chalked it up as a, as, a, as an L. He, he kind of he took the L at the time. You know, he had reached out, he kept getting the run around. He felt like he shouldn't have to be chasing them down after he paid him the money, rightfully so. Like you guys should not be chasing down freaking artists when you pay for a feature and begging them to deliver the said feature within the time frame they delivered. They said they were going to deliver it. You know, he he's saying he never went public with this. Uh, he didn't want to burn bridges. He didn't want to lose connects. And and that's a main reason that a lot of people don't come forward with this type of stuff. That You know, quite honestly, that is exactly why this podcast exists. Because I made a conscious decision a couple of years ago when I decided to kick this thing back up. I had a choice to make. I could either continue exposing and talking about and bringing some light to these kind of situations and and then ultimately live with the fact that I will never have the ability to have these artists on my podcast because they don't want to be associated with the drama, with anybody who has to say anything possibly negative about another artist because the underground is super connected. Everybody knows each other. Everybody talks to each other. All of these rappers... All of them watch this podcast. All of them know that I'm going to be talking about this. All of them see the things and the nonsense that are happening, but they choose not to talk about it because they don't want to burn those bridges or ruin those connects. And it's a small world out here. So you're going to run into these people eventually, right? And so long ago, I made this decision that I'm going to do this because, quite frankly, nobody else will and nobody else can can be without harming their business that's what he's saying here he's like hey i i was quiet i didn't want to say anything about it the years went on and nothing ever happened as you've probably seen from other rappers and other social media posts everybody's always commenting on posts and saying hey you should collab with so and so hey you should collab with this rapper you should collab with that rapper right this was allegedly happening uh quite frequently for for c mob and somebody had posted uh, on social media, which we're going to get to a, a screenshot here in a in a moment about the particular one that kind of set things in motion here, um, that that honestly set off a tirade from Stevie Stone that was freaking bonkers. Um, we're going to dive into that, and we got the receipts for that as well. But yeah, that, that's essentially what what happened here. So he's just kind of giving you guys advice. He's like, hey, look, you know, take caution when you're doing business with artists you're a fan of. Um, you know, they may create great music. Uh, they can also be disgraced human beings. I, I mean, that's true. That's true. That can definitely be the case. They may not be the best at business either. You know, they may be great artists, but they may not be the best at doing things on time, being organized, um, delivering, you know, a, a high quality product to people that are purchasing features and, and doing it in a manner that, you know, is within the bounds of the agreement. So he's essentially just kind of giving giving advice. Um, if you ever accept money for services, you know, do the verse and the hook, get it done. You know, that's essentially his his message here. If you if you mess up, hold yourself accountable. That that right there, that is the key to this entire situation. Hold yourself accountable. Be accountable. Be professional. When these type of situations come up, it is 100% all in how you handle it. This entire situation that got blown way out of proportion could have been handled had Stevie Stone responded in a more professional manner than he did. I am 100% 100 convinced of that. It is what it is at this point. You're going to see how this played out here in a second, but yeah, that's, that's essentially it, you know, and control your emotions. Business is business. Don't let your emotions get in the way of things. Don't let your pride, don't let your ego get in the way of, of conducting good business. And, and CMOB, you know, continued to, uh, you know, post the screenshots of the conversation that happened with Stevie Stone after, this social media post uh, over here in the bottom left corner with a uh, Stevie Stone strange music fan that kind of set all of this into motion here. I'm not a rapper. I'm a grave digger, which, which is ironic because 
shots fired. C-Mob says at the end of his post, if you're going to be a grave digger, make sure it's not your own grave you're digging. Bars. And he comments on this post. He says, hey, paid dude for a verse like seven, eight years ago. Never got anything but the runaround. Okay. That to me seemed a little out of left field. Maybe there was something else kind of leading up to this, you know, and kind of triggered the the memory, but it seemed a little random if I'm going to be completely honest with you when I saw the, the, the post here and this post is still up. You can, you can go check it out. Um, that's really all that's in there. So unless something got deleted or something else happened, it sounded like there were other instances of, of people recommending the collabs and that's, you know, what spurred this, but yeah, it does seem a little random that caused a response from Stevie stone. And he says, you know, I'm going to see you soon, homeboy. I don't do the net. I pull up like instant aggression, instant, like it just wiling out, you know, like no conversation, just straight aggression. Like that's how the interaction starts. Seed Mob continues to interact with him. He goes, hey, so, so you're mad at me because you do bad business and scam me out of my money that I paid you for a collab. Wow. You're worse than I thought. When you pull up, have my refund. Homeboy, you could have had this settled. Watch your mouth, though. I check chins. There's going to be a lot of chin checking during this conversation. Several chins were checked. Several chins. Several chins. He continues to, you know, threaten him. C-Mob comes back. I could have uh, settled this how the numerous times I had reached out to you about the collab you gave me the runaround. Don't scam people, then be mad when they say you scammed them. Grow up. This is going to go, this is going to continue to go south here. <laughs> he goes, nobody scammed you, punk. The typos start coming in left and right. You can tell people are heated when when stuff starts coming in short and sweet. You know, a few, you know, five to eight words at a time with several typos and things that just start not making sense. You know, people are getting pissed off. So now, now things are starting to heat up even worse than they were. I mean, they came in hot, but now now we're now we're scorching. So he just can, you know, he continues to say, you know, everybody knows me that, you know, all, all your people know me like tech ISO again, all these people are connected. C mob ISO strange music tech nine, all, all them. They're all connected. They're all connected. He goes, yeah, I've told a few people you scammed me because you did. So instead of getting mad at me, have some self accountability, be mad at yourself. Like I said, don't scam people that be mad at them when they say you scanned them. You've had like seven or eight whole years to do that collab. Valid point. Why we're talking about it almost a decade later? I again, if there's anything I can knock C Mob for, it's it's probably that. Like, dude. But but then again, then again, what would have happened seven or eight years ago? Who is C Mob seven or eight years ago? Right? He was nowhere near the level he's at now. His name and what he spoke about, what he spoke upon did not hold an, a, as much weight as it does now. And I think the only reason, the only reason this panned out the way that it did was because of the weight that C-Mob has to his name now and the reputation that he has built in the underground. He is a solid artist. He has been grinding for years now. And he has reached a level of success that has at least equaled and possibly even eclipsed Stevie Stones. I'm not throwing shots. Those are just the facts. Accept them or don't. I don't care. How many other artists, though, have this probably happened to over the years that even if they posted about it or said something, it fell on deaf ears. It, it it went to nobody because nobody cared because they didn't have enough clout to make it care. Again, that's why we're talking about this right now. Every underground artist that's going to do a collab and, and pay somebody this amount of money for a collab needs to be careful. They need to be careful and they need to make sure they're conducting their business in the proper way. 
And if stuff's going south, you need to get on it right away. Every single agree one, you need to have a contract. I, I preach this every freaking episode, have a contract and make it time bound. Make it time bound to whatever the agreement is with whatever pay means you used. Never freaking use cash, okay? Look, maybe there's two knocks on CMOB here, okay? Don't, don't pay cash ever. Never hand a underground rapper cash. I get it. it whatever. People want to criticize me for it. That's not the culture, Joe. You don't know about the culture. No, that's stupid business. I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap. You don't do some freaking back alley deal with 10 crisp $100 bills and hand it to an underground rapper, okay? No offense. Just don't do it, okay? Lesson learned. It is what it is. But it happens all the time. And even if you do get agreements, these bastards still don't be sending you in a refund. So I totally get it. Regardless, get the agreement, have it be time bound so that you can get a refund if the, the services are not completed within the allotted amount of time. If you, for instance, have 30 days on your credit card to get a refund, that collab better be done within 28 days so that if you need to go call your credit card company to get a refund, you can get the refund or PayPal or you know whoever you're using as your, your, your payment vendor, right? Regardless. This is continuing to escalate now. As you can see here, it's it's getting it's getting crazy. It is getting crazy. He's saying, you know, hey, when I see you, I'm checking your chin on site. He's checking chins. Stevie Stone is checking chins. Chins were checked. Checked were chins. So he goes, oh, you forgot I reached out to you multiple times over a span of a few years. So instead of my bad, I'll make it right. You're mad at me for something that you didn't do. Again, verse could have been situated. Now I want your chin. <laughs> Stevie Stone, keeper of chins. He will check chins. And look, Stevie Stone will check chins. He will check chins. This is a serious matter. He will check freaking chins. Okay, chins will be checked. That's what he's doing here. He's letting them know. Chin checker. This continues. And CMOB, he, look at what's how CMOB is responding because this is very important. CMOB is not responding with aggression. He's not responding with threats. He's responding with the facts. And when somebody is that irate and you just keep on coming back with the facts, it may take a little while, but they'll usually start coming to their senses. They'll usually start coming to their senses and start becoming sensible. Eventually. It's going to take them some time to cool down. I mean, he's getting accused of not delivering a collab from eight years ago. Like, It's going to piss some people off, but he's getting, he's getting there slowly but surely. And he, you know, he's talking about the money. He goes, hey, it was 1K. What are you talking about? You know, twelve fifty. It was a thousand, and he's just telling him, "Keep that energy, then, because I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna check that chin." So, <laughs> so you know, and and Seamob just responded back, you know, very professionally, as much as he can, anyways. So again, you know, he's letting them know, like, you know, hey, you talk to so and so, talk to his manager, whatever. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's just continuing to kind of say like, I mean, they're, they're, they're excuses. Like, come on, man. Like you're better than all this, man. Like this is, this is freaking nonsense. Um, he, you know, he's, he, he's again, he's throwing text, text name into it, which again, like when you start doing this kind of stuff, don't, don't be throwing people's names in the stuff. Don't, don't be name dropping other people. Like this is a you thing. This ain't a Tech Nine thing. This is not a freaking King Iso thing. This is a Stevie Stone thing. This is a C Mob thing. Take care of business. That's it. That's it. Throwing out names, saying you should have talked to so and so. You should have talked to so and so. He talked to you. He talked to your manager. Come on, man. Joe Biden voice. So they just continue this. 
he he's calling him a schoolyard bully. He he they're they're basically checking out at this point. So I'll I'll leave this up here for a second. You guys can pause it, and then you guys can check out the, the bottom section here as well. Um, very important point here. Um, he said he's going to check his chin. He wants to make that very clear. Chins will be checked. Checked will be chins. He is coming for your chin. Stevie Stone, keeper of all chins. Again, checking chins. He is checking chins. And he's mad. He's like, hey, you should have come, you should have come to me, you know, in 75 different avenues. Which C Mob did. He did this earlier on. Nothing ever happened. So now he's just talking about it. He's just letting people know. Throws out his phone number there. And this is where the conversation just starts to check out. All right. So say less. Now, here come the people out the woodwork. Here they come. Hurricane. Super nice underground rapper. Been at it a long time. Super chopper extraordinaire. I've been through a similar situation with Stevie Stone. It, it's becoming a trend. Here's the refund, though. That refund came through. Stevie Stone did the right thing eventually. This came from uh, Trill Mob, who also had some allegations about not getting the feature from Stevie Stone. And within that post, on the bottom left side there, you can see good. it says, good to see, things were made right. I'll take that other post down, which is the one we just talked through. That's off the internet now. Shout out to M80 and Tech 9 Again, more legends. M80, legend. Tech 9 legends. I'm assuming that somebody picked up the phone because I'm sure Tech and Stevie are still talking, right? I'm pretty sure they're probably still talking here and there. I'm sure somebody picked up the phone and was like, what the F is going on here? Why is my why is my label? Because because look, here's what happens now. Stevie Stone, we know he's not on Strange anymore. He's his own man. He's his own entity. He's got his own company. But when you start name dropping people, like what was happening in those messages, now they got to get involved. Because now it's making them look stupid. Now it's making Strange Music look stupid. And Strange Music, Tech 9 Travis O'Gwen, these guys don't want to look stupid. They want this crap handled. So I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but something was said to be like, hey, you need to hit him with that refund. I find it very ironic that he was arguing over it being $1,000, but then hit him with the 1250 refund anyways. So he probably knew. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he had to check his own chin. I, I don't know. Regardless, he found out that this was the total. This is what needed to happen. So he sent it over. Kudos to him for handling this eventually. I, I'm very happy with that. Unfortunately, I'm hearing from other rappers that this is this is a trend. This is trending behavior. And when it becomes trending behavior, that's when it becomes a podcast. That's when we have to talk about it. That's when we have to make sure that any other underground rapper that's considering getting a feature from Stevie Stone is dotting their I's and crossing their T's and strongly considering the way business has been handled in the past. And this is the recent past. I don't care that the collab was eight years ago. This is how he's conducting the situation today. And how you handle these type of situations, these are the type of moments that are going to define you as an artist, and they're going to make or break your entire career. This is going to be a stain on his career for a while now. I guarantee it. And it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Because Stevie Stone is a great artist. He, a great artist. I, I, I've, I've said this before. His ability to make music, rap, sing, the hooks, everything. Like, super dynamic artist. 
But when you're running around acting this way, it's going to turn a lot of people off. And those bridges that we talked about, people not wanting to burn, oh, they're up in flames right now. I guarantee it. Bridges have been burned. And they won't be built back. Probably ever. If not for a very long time. So... It's really unfortunate, but that's kind of the state of affairs here. There's a tour coming. Here's the connection, guys. Here's the connection. C-Mob, working with Strange, working with X-Rated, working with Unconventional Kings, working with Native King. Like, one, first off, that's a crazy lineup. That is an absolute monster lineup, in my opinion. Shout out to Strange Music for putting on this tour because this tour looks freaking crazy. All of these people, this is this is how you see the connection, right? This is how you see the connection. And and I think it's really important. I, I think, you know, if we... Nobody's asked me to do this, but I, I think it would be really cool if people had the opportunity... I'm going to pull up the, the cash app here that was shared in, in one of the messages. So... What I what I would like to do is I, I think we gotta we gotta show some support for C Mob. We we gotta show some support. And if you are willing and able to hit him with, hit him with a donation. The man's about to go on tour. Support the tour. Go you know what? If you don't want to hit the Cash App, go buy some merch. Go buy some music. Support him somehow. But whatever you can do as as a community within the underground, I, I think we should be trying to help people out like this. I think we have an opportunity here to make a make a difference for people, to show people with our pockets that we support them. So if you're able to, I'm gonna put the Cash App up on the screen. And, and I'll, I'll even put it in the description of this video below. Again, nobody's asked me to do this. Doesn't even know I'm even going to throw this idea out there. And maybe maybe he gets $0 in his cash app. Maybe this video gets 12 views. I don't know. But I want to I wanna offer something here. So be careful who you do business with. And be careful when you do business how you respond to adversity how you respond to animosity, and how you respond to when you make a mistake. Because it will make or break your career. Being keeper of the chins, it, it does, it's not going to fill your pocketbooks. You can't put chins in your bank account. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Joe K. And it's just another day in the underground. <laughs>